Okay, we'll uh, call this meeting to order. Thank you everyone for being here. Welcome. Um, let's go ahead and start with roll call. <clears throat> Tony Doan. Here. Meg Haley. Quinn, Ty. Mike Six. Here. Dave Cocott. Here. Ricky Campbell. Here. Kim Brulette. Here. Chris Seaman. Here. Corey Thomas. Here. Matthew Campbell. Here. Paul Clark. Uh, Zach Tuck. Here. Then Matt, is it Matt Co Kosinen? Is that how you pronounce his last name? That is how you pronounce it, yes. Yeah, this is Matt Kosman. Okay, thank you, Matt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> Excellent. So we have a quorum, so we'll continue. Is there anyone from the public that would like to be recognized? Okay, moving on to agenda item number two, which is review and approve agenda. It's up on the screen now, so let's take a quick look at that. And uh, unless there's changes, we're looking for a motion to approve. So moved, Dave Kokop. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Dave and a second from Matthew. Thank you. Uh, discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any against? Aye. Okay, excellent. Um, Motion is approved. So we'll move forward to the uh, agenda item three, which is review and approve summary minutes for the July 28th tag meeting. Go ahead and scroll through those. Hopefully you had a chance to take a look at it. I'm having a problem getting them on the website. So this is the first time anybody should be seeing them. Okay. And if there's any changes or things we want to see different on here from the last meeting, go ahead and speak up. If not, looking for a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion from Matt and a second from Chris. Thank you. Uh, discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any against? Okay, motion carries. Let's jump to agenda item number four, which is review code change proposal log numbers. And we have three that um, we have set aside for today. First one's going to be log number 50. So we'll go ahead and get that up on the screen and we can start discussion on that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up the one you sent me. I don't see, I mean, if this is the, if we have anything we need to talk about on the other one, we can do it, but I'm pretty sure this is, fixing anything that you might have had. Yeah, I just tried to color code the changes from the original proposal. Um, so uh, this is our certification of um, service personnel for fire extinguishing equipment that was put into the 2018 as a Washington State Amendment. And then it was further cleaned up just recently with, I can't remember, is it a 105? Um, we, we cleaned it up a little bit to eliminate um, some language that was in, if you want to scroll down a little bit more. <clears throat> scroll down to the, towards the bottom, Ray, where it's crossed out. Yeah, right there. So the pre, the um, engineered fire suppression system and the pre-engineered industrial fire suppression system had language in there regarding um, kitchen and the, uh, that's something that was just done recently, updated for the 2018 code. But during the process of reviewing this, the question was asked, besides the ICC NAFED, is there any other types of certifications that are out there that could cover this? And um, our other fellow TAG member, uh, Zach, um, uh, Zach Tuck said, yeah, you know, there is. So what we did is we took a look at what that is, and it's a nice set. Um, which you can scroll back up again if you want towards the top. Slowly. 
There we go. Um, and so Zach helped put this together with regards to um, putting, trying to break it down a little bit differently than what was in the original 2018 code. So we've included this nice set uh, special hazard suppression system uh, into this section. Also included a definition of what special hazard suppression systems are, um, which it all covers. And then um, I put in this exception, and, and the reason for this exception is we couldn't just eliminate what we had just started. We had just started saying, hey, if you're going to work on a kitchen suppression system, you need to be ICC and AFIT certified. And we pushed that back just because people hadn't had the time to get to it. Um, and then, so it got pushed back to July, but I didn't want to just throw it out. So what I put in was this exception that said, um, hey, if you're ICC and AFIT cert certified in the kitchen fire extinction systems, and you can still do that work and you don't have to comply with these other sections that are down here with the design and installation. So it just seemed like the, the fair thing to do um, because I, uh, my personal feeling is if we didn't do that, nobody would even support this. So it, it just didn't make any common sense. So um, the design and installation and, um, and then the one below it is included with the changes. Um, so the changes are all in red and then pink. Zach cleaned it up a little bit more. Um, and then the underlined black is all new. And so basically we're looking at just going through here, making this change. And we're looking for feedback from the group. Matt, Zach, please jump in. Help me out if you want to explain anything more on it, or if anybody has any questions, you guys are the experts on it. I'm just, uh, I'm just a middleman. Yeah, one of the other uh, large issues with the original uh, amendment was it was only addressing service personnel. And we really think at the core of this problem is, is addressing the design section of it as well. And, and ICC NAFED doesn't, uh, doesn't cover any type of design and that is, that is where NYSET really excels and, and, and not only special hazards, but the fire alarm and sprinkler fields as well, which I, I believe everyone's uh, familiar with um, for those fields. Uh, we, you know, we require NYSET level three for sprinkler design and, and we require it for fire alarm design in the state and uh, so felt fitting to require it for special hazard systems as well. And, and we wanted to further clean up uh, installation because there is some overlap um, you know, there is some overlap with, with sprinkler fitting. We don't want to, we don't want to say that special hazards, like, you know, a sprinkler fitter can't put the pipe in. So we added some verbiage in there under installation to uh, add, add those allowances for, you know, if it is pipe, it's sprinkler fitting. Um, and that's covered underneath their, their agreement as well. So just for <clears throat> some clarification, um, the special hazard suppression systems definition would replace the basically three items that exist now in the 18. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so then we're kind of getting rid of the um, individualizing those and, and just calling them all special hazard suppression systems. And then for the, let me see if I can get this right. So it says person in 90411, in front of us here, it says personnel performing system design, installation, maintenance, programming, or testing shall have a nice set in special hazard suppression systems. And the exception would be the ICC NAFED. And that would that exception then apply to the design portion in 904-111? No, it would yeah. only it only would apply to pre-engineered kitchen systems, which don't require any design. Mm. Can I? Hey, Ken. Um, and I feel terrible to ask this: Is this available? I can't read it where it's at, and I'll admit I haven't done my homework. I'm everybody's buried with other stuff. Is this available? Did you send this to me this morning? Yeah, Mike. Yeah, I did send it to you, and I sent it to Ray also. So if he wants to you know, ship it out to everybody. 
please do. Yeah, I'm going to, I mean, I wrote the original stuff and I did it very quickly, kind of haphazardly. And I, and it doesn't surprise me at all that, that revisions are necessary, but um, I love the adding the nice set um, stuff, but I, I'm going to have to read this um, directly. So I'm, I personally, am going to need a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, Ray, are you able to zoom in on your screen? Yeah. Let me just give me just a second oh, okay. here. Yeah, I'm... take your time. Hey, uh, Zach, are you able to just kind of enlighten the group? And uh, maybe it's just for me, <laughs> but uh, just on um, what all is involved in the other special hazard suppression systems from a design standpoint. Because yeah, obviously the kitchen ones are pretty straightforward and pre-engineered and, and, and those aren't too big of a deal. Let's say we get into a, you know, a clean agent type or something like that. I mean, what are we looking at for what's involved? Um, well, it, uh, there's, there's a component of, of every clean agent system that is you know, similar to fire alarm systems in that you know, we have a releasing control panel. We have uh, some sort of initiating devices, be that smoke, heat, optical flame, linear heat, um, and, and potentially gas detection. Installing all those devices um, have to be UL listed compatible as part of the designs, picking the proper components. And then you have to do your normal voltage drop calcs, battery calcs, um, sizing your wire, sizing your battery. But then all, picking the correct type of initiating device for the hazard is, is also extremely important. And then picking a compatible agent um, that is suitable. So certain, certain materials can't be protected with certain uh, clean agent chemicals because of reactivity. Um, and then we have to size the type of clean agent system for the concentration that's required to extinguish the Pacific hazard, be it a flammable like a class B or, or you know, a combustible like a class A. And then we have energized electrical fires, class Cs. Those all have specific design criteria for the quantity of agent per cubic foot protected. And then when we get done with the design, um, the commissioning is, well, we're just gonna talk about design. So I'll okay. stop there. So is there, um, are, is the designer um, going to have to come up with calculations as far as uh, means of delivery, like the amount of agent and, and the, uh, the lineal feed of piping and what type of piping that, that's being used and are, are they having to, is there a program that's offered from the, the supplier that you're plugging all that stuff in or is this, or, or can this get very like detailed? There, there is flow calculation software for the Pacific agent from the Pacific manufacturer. Okay. Yes. Uh, sizing, uh, picking the correct pipe, that's in accordance with NFPA 2001 for clean agent systems. Got it. Okay. And, and the uh, Fire Suppression Systems Association piping guide. Okay. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate that. I, uh, I missed last week's or the last meeting I was on vacation. Was this presented then as well? Did I, was this included in last week's meeting? I, I don't believe it was. We didn't, I don't think we jumped into this one because I, Zach, were you still working on some of the language on this? We were. Yeah. Yeah. There, so we didn't, we didn't touch on this one. I personally love it. Um, and the reason I say that is because I'm a, a big fan of NYSET. Um, and the reason I like NYSET is specifically because they conduct their own investigations or their own background into uh, problems that are associated with that. And I've had a couple of opportunities to, unfortunately, to be a part of that related to the fire alarm uh, NYSET requirements, which I also drafted. Um, and that was much longer ago. Um, the only thing that I think is going to, that I think needs to be at least discussed is under installation where it says electrical uh, construction trade. Now, at the time we did the NYSET requirement, um, and I think Dave could, is, uh, COCA also experienced some of this. The reason that L and I went crazy was because it directly affected the, um, the electrical code. Now, the specific term that they went crazy about, because 
our NYSET requirement in, infringed upon their electrical trade was because of the definition of the electrical work being done. And so there was a very specific term uh, that they wanted at the time, and it was uh, electrical conductors. They wanted it, and I'll have to remember exactly how they had it, but I think this might be a little bit broader than what th they wanted, electrical construction. Tr tr I, I don't know, what, what do you guys think? It's. I, I actually didn't come up with that. That's copied from, I said level two requirements for fire alarm. Okay. And the current code uh, that is literally was cut and pasted. Okay, and which is which I like, and I like that. Um, but very specifically, um, and I wish I could remember his name. But back then, we I actually had the the main guy for LNI in my fire station, and, and I just said, "Hey, we need a way to be able to do this." And so this was actually language from him. So this this language is from LNI. Um, I thought it was something more specific to the electrical conductor shall not be uh, uh, constituted as electrical trade, something, something like that. Um, but if that's actually just copy and paste, I think that's what we should run with. I like, I like it. And, and then if you further down where it says supervision shall consist of a person being on the same job site, um, that was taken directly from 1928 for, for supervision. So it's very in line um, with the electrical um, labor and industries requirements. I, I like I said, I, I like it. Um, I was like I said, I was associated with uh, some of the original language, which you know that Ken and I have talked about a few times. Was very was done very quickly. Um, I actually thought that the ICC certification, the NIFED certification is is going to be easier to obtain a nice set certification is tough um but i do think these are life safety systems and i do think that it's important i would have preferred back then to do the nice set requirement um but i kind of went with the lower understanding just because i thought it would be less less resistance but i'm i'm curious what the rest of the group says this is this is a big this is a big step i think it's a positive step but it's a it's a very big step Thank you, Mike. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Zach, is the have you taken the uh, the NAFED that that would have covered this? I or have. Do you know anyone that has? I personally have taken uh, both NYSET and um, the ICC NAFED. What would you both say? for pre-engineered and engineered systems? Okay. What would you say is the outside of the experience? Because I assume that NYSET's still doing you know your five years of experience before you can test for three. Is that what they're still doing? That is correct. Two years okay. for two and five years for three. Okay. So um, what would you say is the biggest difference in the testing between the NYSET and the uh, ICC NAFED? Um, well, I, I'd start off with uh, the, <laughs> the thoroughness of the test. Um, the, the engineered systems NAFED test was two hours. My NYSET test was six. On a, I did not pass my NYSET on my first time, and I passed the pre-engine or the engineer and the pre-engine on first try. Um, it's very, it's very, it's very simple, and it's it's focuses on, and and being NAFED, which we're a member of, um, you know, their focus is fire extinguishers and pre-engineered systems, and and it shows in their test. They have very, very limited um, questions about engineered systems such as clean agent, foam, um, aerosols. And, and, and of course, like dry, dry chem, you know, dry chem, a lot of people think is, is only pre-engineered, but we, does, we design a lot of engineered dry chem systems for the military where we're doing very complicated calculations because we're well outside of the pre-engineered listing modules for, for size and height. And by, by NAFED trying to wrap these things all together to say, you know, hey, there's pre-engineered dry chem and there's engineered dry chem, I, I think that's maybe the wrong approach. Um, I just, I look at dry chem as hey, it's NFPA 17. And whether, whether or not a manufacturer makes a manual that's pre-engineered and lists it that way, doesn't really make the way the system works any different. It's still the same means of extinguishing the fire. And, and I like, that's why I like NYSET's approach a lot more. Um, 
and Nafe had completely dropped the ball on any NFPA 72 questions about fire alarm and you know detection systems, um, which is a huge component to these. If we don't have the right initiating method, the system just won't, it's not adequate. It won't, it won't, it won't deploy, it won't, it won't extinguish a fire if it doesn't have the right type of detection. Understood. Thank you, Zach. Thanks for that input. We'll open it up Thanks. to any other further con uh, conversation. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, just I, I am with Mike with this as well, because having gone through the the initial discussion with this and we've shared several experiences with uh, L and I, uh, this is really good. I my biggest concern is we tried to implement the NAFED, which was an easier test. Is, I was aware of that as well. Uh, and we still had trouble with people getting compliance with it. What is the time frame that we're looking to implement this new code requirement that they have to be certified to NYSET? Well, it, I can answer that because we're not looking at this till July of 23 for implementation. So, you know, you know, once once this starts getting out there, going through the process, um, you know, by January of 22, people are going to probably start talking about this. And then that gives them 18 months um, to work on it. But and that's the reason I put in that exception, because the bread and butter are the pre-engineered kitchen systems. That's what, um, you know, when I when I was talking to R.T. Hood, who does a heck of a lot of stuff up in uh, Seattle area. Um, that was one of their biggest concerns were just getting everybody certified just for the pre-engineered systems with regards to all these special hazards and these other ones. Um, that wasn't a concern that they had as much. So um, I think that, you know, it gives them 18 months to, to put it together. And I mean, actually it starts today if uh, the tag goes forward with this and then we'll go through the other committees. But um, I don't think that we need to, put together a post implementation date until we get to that process where people are asking for it. Um, I'd rather wait for somebody to ask for it and just let the July 23 date fall and see where it lands. Yeah, my, my, experience, my experience is that it's not gonna be enough. You know, we're gonna get a lot of people like we did with the NASED, NAFED basically come back saying, well, gee, I didn't know about this. It wasn't going to happen. We gave them an extension. They still didn't meet the extension. It's, we have to, if, if we do it without a date, we're going to expect to have the, the, a lot of questions coming to the Building Code Council. So what would your proposal for a date be then? One year from the past, from the date of adoption of the code. Agreed. Now, I, I, Dave, I know you know this, and I'll let the people who are kind of new to the tag know. When we'll be complete with this group one, um, this year, and we, when we file the CR 103, that makes it a permanent rule at the state. Um, but being that it's a permanent rule, we have an adoption date of the July 1, it'll be 2023. Um, so when we run the CR 103 through the rulemaking process, this will go onto the WAC webpage. The old, the 2018 code will still be listed um, on the WAC page under these numbers. And then underneath it, we'll have this new one that says effective July 1, 2023. So anybody who's looking up the code will know that something is coming up down the pipe after we filed the CR 103. Yeah, the problem that we had with the last code updates is that not everybody does that. Not everybody sees the codes. Um, we, it, 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 was a, it was quite, a, quite a, an effort to get even people to do the NAFED and they were complaining that there wasn't enough test time and uh, if we're looking at NYSET, it's going to be a little bit more steady and more, more time to prep for it. And I think that uh, additional year from the date of adoption of the 2021 20, code would be appropriate. Uh, can anyone refresh me? I mean, how, how long did you give for NYSET to fire alarm? Uh, we, we did the NYSET to fire alarm the same time we did the other ones, but it wasn't the NYSET fire alarm. It was the, it was the NAFED for the kitchen hood. That was the one that caused the biggest problem. We're talking to the same people here. Well, I would I would be willing to say that the fire alarm industry had just as many, I mean, had an equal number of, of amount of pushback. Um, I, I agree with Dave. I think there's gonna be multiple revisits of this language. There's gonna be a number of people 
pushing, saying that it was too fast, it's too much, uh, we don't have time, nice that takes too long, um, it's not applicable. I mean, we're going to have to look at every every position on this probably before it's even voted on outside of this group. Um, we're going to be spending a significant amount of time. I do think it's worth it um, because the nice set uh, improvements just in the industry, I think, have been substantial. It, it has raised the bar. It hasn't been without a lot of hard work, but it has definitely raised uh, raise the bar, but um, it's going. This language is going to present a significant uh, challenge to the AHJs as as it goes forward. Help me out on uh, one thing real quick here on the on the alarm requirements. When the state went nice set, there was a, there was an extension of that date, wasn't there? And I thought it was about a year ultimately. Well, what yeah. happened, what happened yeah. a big part of that was there was a push to move it out. But um, when I think Dave and Tracy and Mike, they worked really hard on getting it in and nobody knew about the NAFED cert and NAFED came to us. So that gave us, we pushed it out further to add NAFED to the, the amended process. But we did push it out for-, for The NAFED, uh, the NAFED was, actually a, was actually a separate code uh, adoption period. I, I had actually done the- the nice set stuff. I think it was on the the previous. We did it locally in Bremerton in 2007, um, and it was after that that I that I uh, suggested it at the state level, and it went through, and then it was pushed back a couple of times, and it was on in the uh, wake of the night fire alarm nice set that I suggested the knife ed or the ICC test because it was I felt it was successful. The nice set at the at the state level, so they were different uh, code adoption periods, but the the pattern how it evolved through the trades was virtually identical. Yeah, okay, yep. I, I, I do agree with that. That was that was something that we noticed. It's just that I think that uh, as Mike indicated, he had a program going in two thousand seven. I think ours was going in two thousand four. It was a little before his, but there were several jurisdictions that had a process that. Uh, went through the L and I discussion. Uh, they were uh, uh, quite upset with our programs and we had to make modifications to ours to avoid getting penalties from the state. Uh, so we wanted to be able to make something that was appropriate, but we had already some registration level that we already had a lot of things in place. So there wasn't anybody just starting from scratch. And I think with the, the especially with the kitchen and stuff, a lot of jurisdictions basically said, hey, just show us that you have some it took some classes and we'll certify you. You're fine for that. Or you register you for it. And that's what Spokane did. So when the, the, the higher level came up, we were expecting that. Hey. But what we found is that the industry itself, even yeah. though we advertised it, we sent it out there and we tried to post it all the places we could. The industry did not do a good job of informing each other about, hey, by the way, do you know you have to do this by this date? And uh, that's what we found out is that, well, gee, we didn't even know this happened. And it was two years after the, the code had passed. So uh, it's just the, the industry as itself is the history is going to show that we're going to have some something come up in the future unless we put an extension on this. Yeah, I, I agree um, with that. I know I know in the jurisdiction I'm at that the alarm side was quite a struggle and um, it caused quite a bit of issues and um, ultimately it was the right direction. It just took a lot of effort for everyone to get there, including some extensions and I could foresee the same thing happening here. I'm wondering if when we went through the extension process for the alarm, what's the, what did we have, what, did, what was filed in order to do so, Ray, do you? Were you asking me, Tony? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, what, what has to be filed in order to get an extension after the fact, after an implementation date? Uh, we could do OCR 105. Okay. I. Well, is it work? Is should we think about putting it in for the original date just to at least create some urgency and revisit it at that time, or is that a little short-sighted? Um, if we if we put it in now, there's no harm there. Um, I think the last extension that we pushed was done through an emergency rule. 
if I, I might have, I might misspoke when I said a CR 105, because it was, it was already adopted and it was going into effect on a certain date. So we probably did a CR 103 E, an emergency rule, and then that pushed it out for the 180 days. Um, and you can do it twice as long as you're working proactively on, on getting it adopted. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to think in my head the best way to do it. Um, I think it would if my concern is raised that we push it out two two years or three years or whatever it ends up being and have that date and then that date comes and everyone complains at that date and then we're still at the same issue instead I of do. having multiple times that say you got to get it to create that urgency but that's just my two cents on that so his language his language sorry i apologize ray has language of this nature been introduced at the national level is this a uniquely washington state problem that needs an emergency address it needs to be addressed urgently or emergently i well, do think it's a washington problem because it's other california for instance manages this through their state fire marshal's office which has a much different umbrella approach to managing this type of thing so i i do think it's specific to washington i don't know oregon for instance or idaho or any of the other states directly around us but I mean, just seeing at the national level, if this is a genuine, not that, not, and I'm not a subject matter expert to dispute the content or the quality of the, and I, for all intents and purposes, I'd say this looks like good, good language and a good approach, but is it urgent to Washington state? Because it seems like there's a lot of effort being figured out how to get people to do this. It's almost taking more conversation of how to implement it rather than the nature of the proposal itself. And so if it were introduced at the national level and was part of the model code, then there would, it would take the heat off people saying that they didn't know about it or that Washington state is enforcing this above and beyond the standard model code um, and the complications that have come with that in the past. So just a, just a different, uh, just an outsider's perspective on delivery of the, of the, uh, the issue. I think we'd still be talking about it in this forum though, um, to make sure it's, it's specific to, Washington. I don't, I'm not aware of um, this specific type of language in any of the other trades. For instance, fire alarm, um, I mean, it's very vague. It just, you know, you have to have experience or you need to have training or certified or something very, very uh, benign. I think right. it's specific to, to what we consider valid certifications. Right. No, no, no issue with the content at all. I'm, I'm not in a position to speak to that. I was just wondering, are we in the 2024 cycle? What's the ICC, current ICC cycle? Ken, are you in the, on the national on this? We're 2024 right now. Yeah, the 2024 just came out with the public comments. And I do not believe this section was touched. But while we're talking here, I'll pull that up and, and take a look. I mean, some, would, uh, some, oh, sorry, Matt. I'm sorry, Matt, go ahead. Oh, I was just thinking if it's in, if, if there's time to put that into the national, that's, I mean, it would be a great opportunity to put, you know, to, to, to introduce yeah, I think the concept. I think they're past that time at this point okay. because they're going public comment on the items they've been in. And it also makes it easier. I know with certain proposals at the Department of Health that were in, that I assisted in that went to the IBC. Um, we were just mirroring language that was coming forward, and we've done it as well. We're, we're mirroring language and amendments that, that we know are going to show up in a future code edition, and that would just help, I think, the substantiate the introduction of this language now. So, just about just thinking about delivery and implementation, because I remember having conversations even where in my remote position of having to identify, yes, we do require uh, the last time around these fire alarm drawings that have been submitted to me have not don't have the appropriate stamp and then having discussions with people and said do you have the amendment pages in your in your fire code oh no i didn't know that and I'm like okay well it's in the, it just got you know it, i can tell a lot of folks were frustrated at different levels but this is getting the information out and making sure that implementations worked well so thank you matt um Let's go with uh, Matt has his hand up. I know Ricky, you've had your mic off a couple of times, so we'll go Matt and then Ricky. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that the Unified Facilities Guide specification for government projects has similar language for nice set requirements for basically sprinkler, fire alarm, and special hazards. Um, 
So just wanted to bring that up. Um, so it, it, it's not like a brand new thing for government projects, but it is obviously new for Washington. Okay, thank you, Matt. I appreciate that information. And uh, Ricky, go ahead. So uh, my comment is, or I don't know, a suggestion, or I don't know, I need clarification, is, um, you know, I've installed probably I don't know, 20 or so clean agent systems in my career. Um, so requiring a NICE at level two of special hazard systems, suppression systems, do you actually have to hold that certification? So I know NICE that I can take any test I want. And if I pass that test and I prove I can pass that test, will that be good enough? for everybody in this room or the AHJs, or do I actually have to hold that certificate? So the reason why I'm bringing this up is, you know, I've been in this industry for 18 years and I don't know if I have enough um, credited years to actually hold that certification per nice set, you know, I, 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 I would have to look at their requirements for that, for that license. You know what I mean? I, I'm a nice level two in inspection, testing water-based systems. And I met that requirement, no problem. But when you break out special hazard systems, like I said, I've only, I've only done about 20 or so of these systems. So the question for the group is, uh, is this, the individual installing the stuff, can he just pass that test? And is that acceptable to you guys, or does he have to actually hold that certificate? I would think that the intent is to hold the certificate, and that goes along with the obviously the background that um, legitimizes, you know, the the nice set certification, and I know just speaking from my experience and then I'll let others um, chime in on that. You know, the same thing happened with the alarm industry. You know, there was a lot of people in the alarm industry who had experience or a lot of experience and had issue with, they, they passed the test but couldn't get the actual certification. And sometimes it wasn't because of experience, but you know, they couldn't find another nice set certified individual to sign off on them because everyone that, had the nice set was a competitor type thing, you know, and so they had some issues there. And I don't know for sure if there's ways around it. It's been years since I've done any nice set testing and I did it on the sprinkler side. And so I'm not sure if there's ways around that now, but um, I can foresee that being one of the arguments as well as one of the reasons that it would probably have to be pushed a little bit is in order to get the, the experience, um, you know, that they're not gonna be able to hold that certificate. Right. I got yeah, so, a little bit recommendation. I mean, I don't think anybody's disagreeing that this is a great code. That uh, the time put into it is is amazing. Um, and we could all sit here and talk about what date we think it should be. But being that we still have to run this through a BFP, it's got to go through the council and it's got to sit through public testimony. Maybe notify industry and let industry decide what would be a viable time during the public hearing process that would make this a, a good effective date that they think that they can get people trained and up to speed. I mean, we can make that, we can push this to the BFP and push it to the council because I think we all agree it's a great code. Um, but let, let the people who are dealing with the testing decide what day they feel would be a viable date and would also get the word out to people taking the test. I, I think that's reasonable. Um, however, I do think that this tag should have a suggestion. Um, I. For instance, I know we were talking about the fire alarm stuff. I had two contractors who took the the uh, fire uh, the nice set level one, two, and three in the same day and passed all three. So, and then I had other people that griped and complained that they couldn't do it, they couldn't do it, they couldn't do it. Well, I mean, at the same time, maybe <coughs> maybe that's not their lot in life, and there's a reason that they can't pass that. So, and I don't know what that you know specifically how they were studying and whatnot, but it's, it's not as difficult as they say, but I do think that it's worth getting the word out, but I think that we should set a date, um, at least a proposed date. 
it, 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 although NYSET two requires two years of verifiable experience, it, it, it does not need to be verified by another NYSET person. It can be verified by uh, an AHJ. Um, and my hours were signed off by by a couple of different AHJs and a fire protection engineer. We didn't when I started it. We didn't have any NYSET people at my firm. Thank and you then, for clarifying that. And then Ricky, just to uh, iterate on the installation side, it, it, we weren't saying that you had to have it to install the pipe though. We added a, an exemption to, uh, to, to the verbiage of the definition of sprinkler fitting, which would mean the pipe. So in any, any sprinkler fitter would be able to install the pipe. And, and that's common. Uh, we, we have uh, so many of our customers are, are sprinkler contractors. They install the majority of our clean agent pipe. And to answer Matt's question, no, there is no nothing proposed in the 2024 code to make any changes to that section. So nothing. Thank you. Just a, a nice measure of, you know, so Zach, if you're if you if the language is strong and you know, I would certainly recommend um, putting it out there for that sort of discussion. Just the you know, the, the nature of the debate will be a lot different at the national level, different perspectives. This would be 24. Yeah, so it would be the next code cycle would be the 27 code cycle until we could propose anything. Okay, so right now we have, uh, I don't think the language is going to be an issue. I think we're all pretty much in agreement on that with maybe just a few concerns as far as implementation. That being said, Ray just uh, switched the effective date to 2024, which is consistent with um, Mike and Dave's uh, conversation earlier. Um, at this time, we'd be probably looking for a, a motion to push this forward to the DFP and approve it at the tag level. Make a motion. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion from Mike and a second from Dave. And uh, any further discussion on this? I one thing, uh, uh, Mike. Did you submit the original proposal for this? Uh, yeah, um, and Ken and I have actually talked at, at length about it. And I will admit, um, basically, it was something that we talked about uh, during the tag. And I, I literally did a little bit of research and copied and pasted some other language. And it it was very, it was very quick. Not that it didn't have some research behind it. But a lot of the language was just copied and paste, pasted without um, too much particular vetting through it. I like this much much better because of the nice set, and I and I think it's better because it is consistent with the fire alarm side as well. But yeah, I originally really I just brought up the question um, back back then. So. So as part of the part of the motion, maybe Tony is uh, let's withdraw Mike's original proposal and replace it with the new updated proposal. I didn't propose it this year. Mine oh. was for. The oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought that's what when Ken sent me something new. I thought that was. Yeah. No. I I I oh, added Zach. I added Zach's name on it so he could get yelled at too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. I thought you had submitted a. I thought you were not the, not this year. Mine was the original. I think uh, Ken probably did it um, okay. to uh, revise that language. Is that fair, okay. Ken? Yeah, I, I my yeah. I I didn't plan on doing anything with nice until I talked to you, and then it's like, oh crud, this do this do something. So my my apologies. I'm I'm no, gonna blame okay. it on my Swiss team COVID break. <laughs> okay, ahead, so Tony, I'm sorry. No, that's right. We have a motion and a second. And uh, is there any discussion for the discussion? So, so if this if this moves to effective 2024, what, what is the current status of the ICC NAFED requirements? They would remain until that date. Okay. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll take a vote. I don't think we'll need a roll call on this. So let's go ahead and uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any against? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Great. Let's, let's go ahead and move on to, uh, let's see, where we got next? We got log number 59, please. So Ray, I'm going to ask you to find another document. 
find another one. Yep, it's going to be the IFC tag existing amendment review document because I'm trying to um, Dave's stuff about you know keep amendments review for revision for chapter four. I would love to be able to take a look at that and then Dave get your comments on. Um, you know, which, you know, some of the stuff said review for revision. And that's the reason I kind of put this together so we wouldn't miss it. And so we could take a look at these things that you, you looked at and made comments on so we can review them as a tag and then to say, hey, yep, we're, we're good to go or, or we want to make a change in there. Um, and, uh, I, and I think I did do some of the numbering things that you suggested, but so there's two, so the, yeah, there's that document that, um, I'm looking at it, but I don't know if anybody else has it available or not. What was the name of it again, Ken? I have it as uh, IFC Tag Existing Amendment Review. Um, it you can pull it up off of the um, if you go to the Fire Code Tag website, and then it's under link to. 2021 IFC tag amendment assignments. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, no. Yeah, I just clicked on it myself, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Let's, I'll get there. So yeah, so go to fire code, the fire code tag website. Do you remember what date the tag, what the meeting? The, what the well, did, meeting just, just click on fire code no no go back up to the top and then where keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going right there stop the link to 2021 ifc tag amendment assignments okay thank you yeah that one hey can you read that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Chapter four. Yeah, chapter four. And I just didn't want us to miss anything that Dave had worked on for review. So okay. we're going to have to split it. Yeah, if you, I don't know if you can sp split screen. Can you see it? I don't see a split screen. Oh, a split screen. Oh, you want to do side by side? Well, yeah, I, I don't know what you can do to, so we can look at, um, I don't know if you can do it that way and show the proposal, or if if Dave, we could just, you know, bring up the ones that you talked about review for revision and do that if you want to, if that makes sense. That's fine. Start it. Start at the 401 and move our way down. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Why don't we just do that? So, so we can look first at whatever he said. Uh, review for revision, the definitions, and then we can pull up the proposal. Um, yeah, you can look at look at what the definitions are, then pull up the proposal, and then see what we need to review for revision. I'm, I'm a little confused on what you're, um, so here's the proposal, right? You're on mute, Ken. Ken, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, just scroll down to the definitions. Okay. So we have alarm signal, recall signal, shelter in place, um, all as, you know, Washington specific ones. And, 
and the the base code only has the emergency evacuation drill and, lo and lockdown. So just want to make sure we want to keep the alarm signal, recall signal, shelter in place, making sure that we're still using them in chapter four. I'm thinking that's what you were thinking of, right, Dave? That's correct. <clears throat> so the only thing I could suggest is if uh, we pulled up chapter four and just verify that we had alarm signal, recall signal, and shelter in place being used. So if we want to keep those. Are you asking me to pull up another page, Ken? <laughs> I don't know what I'm asking. <laughs> I'm just, just wondering if, if you know, we're, everybody's going to have to try to figure out, you know, who, who's got chapter four available that they can pull up maybe in a PDF and do a quick search of the word. And I don't know, just trying to work through this process here. Um, hold on now. What word am I looking for? Um, <laughs> I, I need to get rid of your screen, hold on. I'm trying to make it bigger for you guys. The problem is you're you're searching the 2021 IFC. We need to be searching the Washington State Fire Code because those definitions oh. were just added to Washington State. Um, okay. Whoops. Um, I can speak to shelter in place. From a quick word search, it occurs four times in the Washington State Amendments, Washington version. Thank and you. It, start, it starts out with on the list of definitions. Then it says employees shall be trained in fire prevention, evacuation, shelter in place, and fire safety. That's 406.3, 406.34. It says, where a facility has a shelter-in-place plan, employees shall be trained on the alert and recall signals, communication system, location. Of, so it does tell you what it means. And so there you go. The, uh, I, the, the, the one that I, that I noticed with this one, because we do have in, uh, in the current WAC, we had a uh, recall signal and we also have shelter in place defined. We do not define the alarm signal. <clears throat> we define alert signal and not alarm signal. So these two wouldn't need to be underlined? They're current, current amendments, yes. Yeah, alarm signal is the same in the 18 and 21. Uh, and there is no state language, but yeah, I think it's, yeah, and signal is, so I'm seeing the same thing. Is, is shelter in place an option or a requirement? Is there another section of the code that would require a facility based on use or occupancy to have a shelter in place program? Or is that an option among many for a facility's emergency planning and preparedness? A little bit of the history to this, and some of you may be aware of this, is that uh, we pretty much rewrote chapter four several cycles ago. And we, you know, it was just basically, don't even look at the model code, look at our code. Um, over the last couple cycles, we've tried to move back more towards the model code. Obviously, I, something I'd like to see is that rather than creating our own stuff, let's, let's use as much of that. But one of the things that we've run across with shelter in place in particular is the other codes that are out there regarding how many uh, fire drills, how many shelter in place drills, how many uh, different types of drills that occurred with that. So it, shelter in place is actually a Washington state requirement under the Board of Education for the, the number of drills they have to have during the year. So that was something that we carried over 
because of that. Is that occurring another whack then, Dave? Or is a no a I'm OSPI not even, kind of special requirement? It's it's in OSPI. And I'm not sure if it's in theirs or not when we go back to that, because <clears throat> I'm I'm not the one who did all the work before. I think uh Mike Six, are you still on? Yep, because I think you had chapter four a long time ago, didn't you? And you did the review for that. Right. I so and that was exactly I, I heard what you said. That's exactly what the plan was. We had chapter four, what had been virtually completely re rewritten, and the intent was to lean back towards uh, language from the, the standard model code. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of that. Boy, that was a long time ago. So yeah, it was. <clears throat> but I know the shelter in place became an issue with doing with OSPI and kind of talks with even the definition predetermined interior rooms. Well, shelter in place in classrooms. That's kind of where the term came came from. Yeah, I, I don't remember that specific scenario. I know that we worked with a couple of different uh, entities related to their specific requirements. I think we also had some Department of Health uh, definitions and, and timelines and whatnot put in the uh, chapter four as well. Yeah, right. and, and, and I was, so two, two thoughts jumped to mind in that regard is that as an emergency planning concept, shelter in place and an educational occupancy might be okay, but as a smoke and fire design concept, it might not be okay because they're not necessarily, I don't know that they're necessarily constructed similar to an I-2, which does plan for containment, smoke and fire, smoke compartmentation, et cetera, et cetera. And the other part is that I wondered if there was, I think another one, the um, staged evacuation may have come out of the Department of Health um, amendments in the past regarding um, the, some of the licensed facilities that we work with. And I didn't know if the shelter in place was kind of a leftover from, from those Department of Health licensing specific, like an ambulatory surgery or something like that, and that, that may have just been hanging on from those past amendments. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall those specifics. So Ray, did you uh, remove the underline and shelter in place? I did. Do you want me okay. to put that? Well, the only reason I'm saying I think it still needs to show it is because in our current WAC, the 406.3.4 and 406.3, that's where it's, you know, it's come, that word shelter in place is still there. So. Yeah, I think recall signal needs to be underlined and then we, we don't underline the alarm signal, right? Well, alarm signal doesn't even exist in our definitions or in the model code. It's it's alert signal, I think, is what because there, there may be a typo there. Alarm signal is in the model code. Yeah, as a defined. Is it in the term. model code? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do we even need it here at all? We do, but I think it just doesn't need to be underlined because it's well. Or it's it? not. Yeah, no, because I don't think it's used in chapter four. It it is in the amendment. It, you know, it is used in our WAC. So we created it, it sounds like. Yeah. But we can change it, that means, if it's appropriate. And I guess don't suppose to, on the other one, the shelter in place, I don't suppose there's anything, there's any harm in having shelter in place available to folks. Uh, but it's extra words in the code. That's why it's underlined, because it's not normally in chapter four. Oh, even understand. though we didn't make up the word. We added it to 402.1. That's why it was underlined. So Thank you, undo what we just undid, Ray. <laughs> Back to the original. <laughs> now so, that we understand what's going on. Okay, so what what we need to what does it need to say? Just underline alarm signal alarm. is underlined. Hey, these are easy fixes. You guys can do this all day. I don't care. <laughs> we are on the first three lines, so let's not uh, get too excited. <laughs> Okay, can continue. Okay, so recall signal, did we decide we're keeping that? It is used in All our right. amendments. Then we need to keep, then we need to keep it right now. Okay. You muted yourself, Ken. I know. We're now we're down to the 403311. So my first question on this is this is showing our state amendment. 
Okay. How <coughs> should we be striking as we did in the, we struck safety and should we be striking that also in the body? Because right now I just reached fire evacuation plan and there says the fire safety and evacuation plan. So that's my question to the group. To me, it makes sense to get rid of it, um, the, five, five, the safety portion, but. That's following the model code though. No, but but the state amendment, we struck it already at that safety and, and and you know, I don't know why, the top of my head, I, I must have been in Arizona. I think consistency wise, it just makes sense to strike it if it's already in, you know, already revised. I I would submit that I like the fire safety and evacuation plan. Because I deal with buildings that don't evacuate, or they have staged evacuations, sure. Or they, and it gives me a little more room to to ask a general comment, and not have somebody come back and say, "That's not an evacuation plan question." And there could be a carryover from earlier parts of chapter four where we were not doing the shelter in place requirements within the code because that wasn't under the fire code it was under police requirements but that got moved back to where you could put it back in the fire code so the fire and safety evacuation plan terminology probably be fine to leave that you know, return that back into model code language or maybe it's because we have a fire safety plan, which is a little bit different. It's kind of confusing. If you want to make the, sorry, I'm going to recant that as I keep reading the code, but if, if maybe the effort was then to differentiate a fire safety plan from a fire evacuation plan. But to, yeah, and I, I agree with that, Matt. But to Dave's point, does that mean we can just put fire safety back in on the, on the uh, title there where we crossed it before? Is that what you were saying, Dave? Sorry. You know, this is yes, I, that's what that's what I was yeah. saying. Okay. I apologize yet again. So this is a Department of Health thing because this is specific to ambulatory care facilities. Uh, you know what? He looks like he's at Arizona. Yeah, it is specific to ambulatory care facilities, you're correct. Then I think I vote for the original just consistency yeah. or there's a question about whether or not we need the amendment at all, but I don't know. That's something we want to discuss today. Well, I, I'm just wondering that since the word safety and, um, and also care recipients was added into the 2021 code. Um, so that was added. And I'm wondering if John Williams was the one that added this into the 21 code. So you think it would be inappropriate for me to try and strike out my supervisor's <laughs> amendment to the code? I'm just bringing it up. <laughs> Boy, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, and, and the other one is it's, um, you know, the the words care recipients, care recipients, care recipients that was that was added into the 21 code. Um, So I, I don't know if if somebody wants to, I mean, I can, I don't know if you guys have a copy of the red line version available or not, but I do. And I'm just looking at the words that were added in this section. I mean, even the defend in place response, wouldn't that refer to what we're already calling a shelter in place? Yeah, that's model code language that we're striking. And, and again, this is where I think we got to lean on Matt because it's ambulatory care facilities. And, um, and I don't disagree, or I thank you for that, but I also, you appear to have a little more context as to 
previous amendments, which I don't want to step on now because I just wasn't privy to the conversation. Um, so if your original, if the original purpose of this discussion was merely consistency in the first seven words of 40331, that would seem an appropriate amendment and we don't have to get into the, uh, the modification. So we don't have to get into the, the history of it and where, where I went. Um, I don't think it's any harm to merely replicate the title in the language of the in the section. So, so this is how I'm, I'm reading the 2021 code change. Um, they added the safety and right after the numerical and maybe they added it because it was in the body. The fire safety and evacuation plan in the body was already there in the 21 code. They decided, hey, let's retitle it to fire safety and evacuation plan. So maybe it was just missed. Um, and then just in the 2018, and they decided to put it back in for the 21. I'm guessing on that, but that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, do, does it really matter if we keep it in, if we don't strike safety and? I don't think it does. So with that idea of Ray, if you could unstrike the safety and and Ken, did you, so you're saying John added the care recipients, which made it into the 2021 version? I, I don't know. I'm just making, I'm just making that assumption that that might've been, I, I can go back through the code changes and, and find out. This would only lead me to wonder if we need the amendment at all, given the language of the 2021. Yeah, let me, um, I will go offline here for a second and, and look it up. Ray, are you able to scroll down just, just a little bit? I can do whatever you want. You're the chair of the tag. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. I think keep the amendment. Don't touch it. It's easier. That's, I'm making that call because there's also a difference in the language regarding staged evacuation and defend in place. The model code identifies defend in place. We don't treat ambulatory surgery facilities, which are modified B occupancies as defend in place environments. So there's still some tidying up that needs to be done at the national level as far as getting into align with our interests or how we use the code in Washington state. And then we can put this move on to something <laughs> okay go ahead and scroll back up right and we'll make that change back to okay so we'll keep the we'll keep the strike through matt is that right on the safety end i just say leave it alone it, okay it, for all intents and purposes okay Okay, so I did find the code changes that John <laughs> um, yeah, John Williams did propose this change in for the 21 code. He's got a whole bunch of them that he did. Yep, he's the one that put in the safety and he's the one that put in the care recipients. Um, yeah, he he has yeah, his, his fingerprints are all over this. No, that's yeah. surprising. So does what we have up on the screen look like what he had intended? 
Um, fire safety and evacuation plan. Section four show includes. I'd say we deleted a man's so, name all over it. So, <laughs> so he kept the words procedure. Um, yeah, he kept the word procedures. So it says this shall include procedures for stabilizing. He struck patients and said care recipients. Yeah, so the the language in the 21 code is is all his. And and so if we wanted to be consistent with what John did, then we would just go with model code language and not make any amendments. Withdraw the amendment entirely. Yeah, because the model code language is what he proposed. I can say with confidence that I'm the only one that will be dealing with this because I'm the reviewer for all ambulatory surgery centers. And I don't see a material difference. We can just delete this whole 403311. Yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't amend it. So it would just be base code language. Let me retract. I might not be the only one dealing with it, but I'll be one of the primary ones dealing with it. So I just want to make sure if we're showing it that way, that means that doesn't mean that we're deleting the base code language. Nope. No, it just it just goes back to you would use the model code. Okay. All if right. It, if it, if it was that way, Ken, we would say four hundred three three point one point one not adopted. Okay. We would put. All right. So, do we want to go? Okay. So now we have our next one. Four hundred three. Assembly points and fire operations. I'm sorry, I'm 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 just double checking to see if this was another John one also. And this is this is group E occupancies now because it's four oh five three five four in our 2018 amendment. Or be for, okay, yeah, 40343 for the 2021. Four, three. So I, I'm going to guess this was just a state of Washington one, just to, um, which I don't understand where it came from, but um, unless you're working with your local emergency responders, are we really going to know um, where they're going to be utilized for fire service operations, the area assembly? I mean, I, I can understand they don't want them to all congregate in front of an FDC or hydrants, but I don't know where that came from. I don't remember the specific things on this, but I do remember that there was a discussion about the, uh, uh, some areas are arranged to keep each class separate, provide accountability. Now, the, I think the, the OSPI people were basically saying that that's pretty tough to do, but uh, it's, it's something they put in their own plans and necessarily have to be in the code for that. The 2021 language looks pretty, looks like it addresses the intent of the, the amendment. And that's clear it wasn't, the 2021 wasn't changed at all from the 18, so. <clears throat> oh, except for the, now you get you now, Dave, the assembly identifying that uh, separate, keeping the classes separate to override amount of accountability, which seems like not a, 
a it's not really a fire code issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, my, my feeling is just keep the state amendment. I mean, I can't argue either way for it. So. Yeah. I think that's what we kind of went through the basic thing. It's like, just, you know, don't, don't keep them out in the front driveway. Don't keep them in the parking lot right next to the building. Just get them away from the building. And uh, it, we just seem to want to say to keep it simple at that point. I think that's just the background for that one. Dave, wouldn't that mean then we want to say just delete the second sentence? Um, and I mean, none of that says make it away from a building. It just says don't put it where operations will be. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess I don't have a, a stake in that, whether, whether which one would be better or not. They're both pretty much say the same thing. Just one shorter. Yeah, so brevity is good. Brevity is good. I'm, so I'm finally, I, I don't think that I, if we just leave the amendment, I don't have any problem with the with the language. If we wanted to, to modify it to just take the last sentence out, I don't have a problem with that either. Do we have a uh, proposal from anyone as far as what what route we want to go in this? Oh, it's not that important to me. Just to try yeah. to go Maybe. back in time and figure out what people were thinking. Um, I don't know about everybody else, but I have exactly no time to look at this kind of stuff. In reality, when it gets doesn't get submitted to us and nobody looks at it, so it's just a requirement in the code that nobody checks up on, so far as I know. All right, well, then let's move on to the next one then. So we're just leaving this as is? That's that's the proposal. The, the next one is just a renumbering, um, just so we pick up the next, the, the other code change proposal right underneath it. Can, can I go back one time, just, just for my clarification when I get ready to do this? So this these are all struck. Is this, the, an exi this is an existing amendment, right? Okay, yeah, so the existing amendment isn't doesn't show everything struck. I just showed the 21 language that we're striking. So the existing state amendment for that just says assembly points in fire operation, assembly points shall not be in areas like to be utilized for fire service operations. So okay, um, that's how the that's how the whack is read right now. Okay. And the only reason I ask is when I do my OTS document, if this was this was struck and it was in the OTS, I would strike it. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not. It's it's one, not. Okay, I just want to clarify. Thank you. So so the next one is just a numbering change, which I think, you know what? Um it, yeah, it's just yeah, the, the whole thing just has to get. It's just renumbered because in the in the WAC we have it numbered differently. Or actually, I mean the WAC has it as 403.10.2, but I think in the 21 code it's a different number. It's 403.9.2. So that this was just a a numbering issue. It, the, it got changed in the 21 code. So I, I should have really shown the, the numbering difference, but I think you, you understand what we're trying to do here is? Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, they just, we added a section in here, 903.9.2.4. Yeah. So with the, with the new numbering, it changes to the four. So we change that three to four. Okay. All right, so then the next one, um, just that's the existing state amendment. Yeah, we don't have R4 in the building code, so that's pretty easy one. Just letting you guys know that the state fire marshal's office has been talking about reinstating R4 for certain occupancies don't seem to fit other places for their code stuff, but they didn't submit anything, so I didn't forward anything on that. Thank you, Dave. 
right, I'm moving on. Crowd managers. So this was a change, right, Dave? They they did the number. That is correct. So, so the base code has it as 500 people. And I think we, yeah, we added in the or as required by the fire code official. Yeah. I'd like, I'd probably like to see that stay. Did we do that in the 18? Um, yeah, yeah, we did because that's why it's shown. Yeah. So, and that, that was, yeah. So, the, uh, so this, maybe this is the number, not the one I was thinking of, but. I have it open, Ken. I don't think I love the uh, down exception number three. It says, shall be reduced where it seems like that should be a maybe oh so they the model code language you don't like but just because it's shall be reduced where i mean that that's <laughs> a you must do right it should be a you may do i don't know it's a very nitpicky little thing are you asking you want a may I think a may is the correct language there, but I don't think it ultimately, this is, a, this is a small, just nitpicky code language thing, not a real world application thing. And the model code says shall. Yeah. So do we want to change it or it's yeah. in the model code? I just want to voice my model code messed it up. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I think we'll- uh, I still dislike the word may. <laughs> 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 it gives it gives people excuses. <laughs> yeah, no, I, th I think it, with the, I think the discussion I had before is that you know following this is in the opinion of the fire code official. So six to one, half dozen to another. Yeah, I would lead with in the opinion of the fire code official. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But model language is good. So. Okay, so then the next one. Uh, crud, I'm trying to remember which one. 404. Okay, so the state amendment says 404 2.3 that we don't adopt it. But scroll back. So that would you this be anything that's 404.2.3. And then, so just, just scroll down a little bit. Yeah, keep, keep going until there's no more strike through. But, uh, all right, where is... Uh, it's hard for me to talk with that. Uh, okay, so I, I guess I'll just, just bring it up. Did, did we want to take a look at the model code language that we struck and want to keep it? Or are we just, we're okay with, because um, I'm looking at the, the title in section 404 and should we be striking then the title and it says the title is 404 fire safety common evacuation and lockdown plans. If we're going to strike the 404.2.3 that we have in our state amendment, if we're going to continue down that path, should we not be also striking wherever else lockdown plans is mentioned? Yeah, that's right. Go see what makes sense. I cut you off there. Sorry, Dave. Can you say that again? <clears throat> no, so if we're going to 
if we're going to keep the lockdown plans out, it makes sense to change a section title. So you're merely proposing and modifying the section title for consistency with our not using the lockdown plans section. Yes, that is what I'm proposing. But then wherever, like in the general section, it talks about lockdown plans. The contents talks about lockdown plans. So wherever the word lockdown plans is, so there's no confusion that the state doesn't want to be Would it editor would, would further editorializing that make it actually more confusing? And or are we still against lockdown plans, or would you would would there be an idea of entertaining idea of saying like we're required by the code official lockdown plans? I think that there was some conflict with the language of the OSPI had. And I recognize that also, I think, I remember last time Dave and I were talking to like, that's not in our wheelhouse. <laughs> we don't, yeah. we, that's not a, that's not a fire thing at all. Right. So it was right. kind of on the boundary there. Yeah. So we're basically saying we really don't want the lockdown plans in our code because again, that's not what we do. So what we can do I guess Ray and I can work in the background, but we can go through and pull up the sections in 404 that have the terminology locked down and, and just strike it because it was added in the 21 code in several areas that we didn't have in the 18 code. Could, could I submit we unstrike it all and to say lockdowns plan may be permitted where such plans are approved by the fire code official, then say, you're just, and you know, nobody's gonna do it because it's work, but it's, it reduces the clerical burden on the state amendment process and correlation. Well, if, if Ray, can you just scroll up to the 404.2.3? Cause that's where Matt's talking. I think, is that, I, I'm sorry, I don't even have the picture on that. Matt, that is your voice, right? Okay, so that's base code language now. So if you want to change that 404.2.3. That technically should be a separate amendment, but it would just, I don't, I'm only submitting that as an idea to make the, like I said, reduce the totality of the Washington state amendments to the model code and maybe. But, but the, I mean, I don't, under, if, if there's a school that wants to provide a lockdown plan, they've developed one, why does the fire code official have to get involved with it? Oh, for, I think that's pretty actually, just cause the, I bet there's someplace else in the fire safety and evacuation plans where we tell them to tell us if they lock the doors. So you would know, at least in that building, where there's special locking procedures or, or containment what have you so if, if a school has a lockdown plan i think the fire responders i think responding agencies would want to know just like you know you know is the door locked are there medical gases behind that door is there pile of hide storage behind that door um are there smoke barriers those sorts of it seems like a general purpose thing and then how much they do with that or how much they want to engage would be up to the local jurisdiction and I, like I said, I don't know that a lot of people would come forward with them except under special circumstances. And they'll say, you can do this if you want to go through the effort, but if you want to lock people up, sorry, I'm using about, user language that, that you would coordinate that with the about, responding. Um, Dave, I'm asking you this question. Would you be more in favor if we got rid of the word approved? Um, and it can just be you know, reviewed by the fire code official, maybe reviewed. And then that, because I don't know if you want to be the one approving these plans. That's kind of why we took it out. So, so if, if we changed it and just said lockdown plans, you want to be permitted. Um, 
and I mean, lockdown pl plans. I, I yeah, I, I see why Dave wants to take it out. <laughs> I, I got it. Yeah. I got it. <clears throat> and I think that's the discussion we had before was that you know, if we have it in here, then we're doing it or we're reviewing it. Yeah. And, it's, and, it, and it's not a fire issue. It's a, a law enforcement. And the schools within their requirements, I, I remember some discussion of that. They, they have to have the lockdown plans set up and it includes notifying the fire department and obviously uh, other first responders. So to us, it just made more sense. Let's just take it out. Uh, we, we do have other jurisdictions that are doing the, the fire departments involved with it, but we're not the lead. So let's let's not include that in our code. So outside of the 404, um, I just put in the chat the other areas that lockdown is mentioned and it's mm -hmm. pretty limited. And so from there, that should be a pretty easy cleanup behind the scenes if we just want to keep it as struck and then go back yes. and clean up the rest. Yeah, that, the only, it's just going to show a lot of state amendments for this section. I mean, like, are we deleting the whole, like, Tony, I see you got 405.1, 406. Would that be, would we completely deleting that? No, it's just it's just referencing it to show where I'm just showing where lockdown plans are mentioned elsewhere in the section where it may need to be removed depending on the context. And those notes are for me. I mean, just so when I'm writing the code. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, fine. Fine. Me. Yeah. We'll just we'll just go through and try to clean up the language because some of it's a lot of 21 new language that's in there. Rule six three point four in our amendment. We've already removed emergency lockdown training. Over term, so that I think we got the one covered. We'll get down to it. We'll see it. Oh, thank you, Dave. Yeah, and I and I just pulled those off of the 2021 model language. So yeah, I may be those may already be taken care of, right? Okay. Well, if they are, I'll know when they get in there. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> Is there a, yeah. an I'm sorry, just to draw on the wisdom of the, the group here. Is there a spot in 403 where actually a lockdown plan is a requirement? Not with an R code, no. Okay. I'm just looking at the charging language for the section. This is where required. And I'm extrapolating a little bit of thinking ahead for the diversity of residential treatment and behavioral health type facilities that are going to be coming in under a range of occupancies of everything from R to I that might, that I know that that WAC is under development for how we're gonna determine occupancy types for those special treatment facilities. And just in case the lockdown plan was actually required someplace or that hopefully um, any special conditions for those types of residential treatment, some you know um, involuntary treatment facilities are addressed in the other sections of this chapter. We don't. Okay. So, so we're probably looking at maybe working with an eight foot by three inches wide. So are we looking at uh, keep, like can do yeah, can you scroll down this cam? So, so they what Matt brought up, there's one thing in 403.3.1.1.1 under fire safety plan. There's a, it just references location of any special locking arrangements, but I don't think that's considered a lockdown plan. That's the only word I could find. So, all right. So yeah, scroll on down to our next wonderful amendment, which I believe these are all um, 
let's see, was it 406.1? Oops. Yeah, we're just going to be, uh, there we go. So we took care of the, the drills, we got, we, we struck that and then the 406 stop. And I think, um, 44232. Oh, okay. Drills, and drills. I don't even know. Did we? What's the, the, well, we're striking that anyway, so never mind. Okay, so 406.1, the general day's recommendation just to keep the amendment. Um, so I, I don't have anything to say on it besides just, showing it okay. 406.2 the frequency again just keeping the amendment Chris do you okay with that shell <laughs> no <laughs> actually my buddy is at the uh, our attorneys for the state and all shells should be musts <laughs> and then the 406.3 again just showing it to keep that amendment by adding sheltering in place okay. and then this was to again the 406.3.4 which is, I think might be a renumbering um, keep the amendment here. And there's the alert and recall signals. Okay. Um, do we have to italicize it if we're going to say it's a definition? Where is it at? I'm sorry. Um, the 40634 shall be trained on the alert and recall signals. Were we going to? So alert and recall, alert would be yeah. italicized, right? Yeah, I'm thinking if they were keeping that. And then recall signals as well. If we have a definition for it. I think we do. Um, you add alert signal and recall signal, signal, just to, so the full word definition is in there. Is it, do you want a plural or just singular? Wow. Chris, help me out. <laughs> System. Be one signal between each of them, I think. Yeah. Okay. So take, take away the um, plural on both of those. Take away the S? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, on recall signals too. You get rid of the and. Okay, okay Ray, can you just scroll back up again to the, where I have it as 406.3.1 that we're st here? No, up a little higher. Uh, 463.1. Chris, are you okay with the apprised? That one jumped out at me as particularly annoying. Who's this? Where's that one at? It's a model code, too. So, yeah, it's, it's not ours. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it <clears throat> shall be apprised. Yeah, what we'll number? Be apprised. You, what number? <clears throat> you, huh? 40631. Oh, 40631. Okay. Oh, right here. I got you. So, so Dave, your 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 one of your comments was on the emergency lockdown training. It says modify amendment. Did we cover that? And and the, then the the other comment was renumbered to four hundred six dot three dot one. So it's four hundred six four. 
Okay, let me see what the note was here. I don't recall this one. Oh, it says, okay, so emergency lockdown training, we had is this section is not adopted in the state. Okay. Yeah, oh, this we, is- we, we end okay. up re moving, changing emergency lockdown okay. training to emergency shelter in place. Training. Okay, got it, got it. That makes sense to me now. Okay. All right, well then that should be it for the chapter four, I think, I don't think there's anything after this, right? No, I think no. that's it, that's the end of it. So uh, any further discussion on this before we look for a motion? Okay, we will entertain a motion at this time. Anyone has one? Motion to move this forward to the BFP. Thank you, Dave. Second. second. Thank you, Ricky. Appreciate it. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, can you scroll back up to 405.5 if we have something there? 405? Yes. Do we have a 405.5? No. Crap. Right, sorry about that. Um, in the model code, it mentions R4. Is that okay if we just administratively strike it and not have to show it? It's, it would be implied because it's not adopted. At this okay. Point. Okay. All right. Then I got, because we have that same, th yeah, we have that in, in 405.12. So, or one also. Okay. So yeah, if it's implied, we'll, we'll be fine. I got nothing else to discuss. Okay. Any further discussion? Excellent. Uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any against? Okay. Motion carries. Very good. We have um, about 17 minutes left. So I don't well, know the, if to tackle that last one, but. Next one's a slam dunk. Perfect. Uh, last uh, words. Can't believe you said that. <laughs> uh, number 61. Yeah. Three fourteen. Let me find that one. Okay, so this is one that's um, been proposed for the twenty twenty four code, and the explanation is down below it. And this is basically because we have a um, uh, different type of gaseous vehicles that are out there, and I just checked this morning to see if anybody proposed any public comments to this proposal for the 2024 code and there was none so it should go in as submitted and it has as you've seen it see it right now um so this is the proposal in front of you and then again the explanation is down below if you want to get to that um so it's, it's basically just taking a 2024 code change proposal, moving it forward into the 21. Is this the amendment, or this is this code sections that are talking about, like when you bring a car into the mall kind of thing? Yeah, it's the indoor displays. Okay. And there's currently no guidelines for anything but gas powered yeah just well, it, it says fuel, fuel and fuel tanks and it's this yeah. has been an issue for us so i <clears throat> i like the language yeah no that makes sense that it's <clears throat> specific yeah, yeah. The, the charging section talks about liquid fuel or gaseous fuel vehicles but then you're like okay I, great i got a hydrogen fuel but what does that mean you know so this was the proposal and that's why i'm thinking it's a slam dunk somebody worked very hard in putting this together for the 24 code it got through it, and I'm just hoping that we can move it early into the 21 in Washington State. Uh, Ray, can you scroll up a little bit just to the uh, to the well to the beginning of the proposal? Okay. 
So they just added to the 314.4 that's in the 21, right? Yes. Yeah, this is all, okay. yeah, this is just added. Okay. So our existing state amendment um, trying to figure out if an operable. Yeah, so I, I remember this now when our existing state amendment for 314.4, I think I brought forward the 2021 language <clears throat> into our 2018 code. So we already moved everything up. And now this is again, trying to move the 24 language into our 21 code. Yep, sounds good. So we, when 2024 comes, we would just delete this? Because it's already in the model code. Um, well, we do have one word different in paragraph one. We have ignition batteries. So we've added the word ignition there that's not in the model code. Yeah. The, 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 the ignition is the, yeah, is the 24 language, 24 proposed language. 24 okay. language. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, if we end up uh, approving this and we wouldn't have to worry about it in 24. In the 24 cycle, we would adopt the 27. <laughs> if I'm still here. Uh, maybe it might even be the 30 by the time you get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, any, any discussion or concerns on this? Okay, so we'll be looking for a, a motion to push this forward to the BFP. So moved. Second. Motion from Dave, second from Matt. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any against? Okay, motion carries, thank you. All right, we did it. We got through our goal today. Let's uh, head to agenda item, let's find my agenda. Number five, which is other business. Does anyone have any other business they'd like to bring up? I can just report back that I talked with the building code tag about our suggestions for the sound transit proposals and gave them a heads up that we're asking them to come back in with renumbering that kind of matches existing amendments elsewhere that kind of pull in other uh, amendments to standards outside of the code. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you, I, I did see that in the minutes of the building tag when I was reviewing them. And, and Mark Murray and I did have a conversation today that um, he wasn't attending today because he didn't see it on the agenda, but it sounds like he'll be ready for the next one if we want to tackle that. Okay, excellent. Ray, on the next agenda, if we want to put that as one of our items, that'd be good. Pardon me, I'll say that one more time, Tony. Uh, for the next agenda, maybe we can put that as a specific item. Sounds okay. like um, Mark Murray will be back, so. Can I get uh, consensus of the tag, how they like the shorter meeting and or the new, new, new agenda? Did that help? Short is good. Okay, good. I did also want to report that there is a consortium of industry, uh, basically any, any part that was involved in it, you may be aware of uh, uh, HB, I think it was 2701, that required the uh, smoke dampers and smoke control system testing and certification process and stuff. <clears throat> I participated in a, a first meeting of the group that is working to establish the test for certification, there isn't one currently. So we met with uh, uh, representatives of uh, the, the group that does a lot of certification tests across the country. And uh, we'll be looking for some subject matter, matter experts and starting getting some of that put together. Uh, we're also establishing another meeting to uh, get a consortium together of those who are interested in getting the language modified within the RCW to uh, remove the language from uh, 1927, 700 to 704, or excuse me, 740, 
so that it, uh, instead of putting all those requirements uh, that are unworkable into the RCW, they would move it to rulemaking, the Stability Code Council, and we're looking, it looks like we have uh, some uh, interest from a couple legislators to be able to move forward with that. So that'll be an effort from uh, uh, that group that the, the Prime Marshal Association is working with. Okay, thank you, Dave, I appreciate that. Is there anything else for other business? Thanks, Dave. Okay, well, thank you everyone for uh, showing up today and participating, that was a good meeting. So we'll uh, go ahead and adjourn and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care, everybody.